Hi, I'm Neil from Threshold. I'm here with Joe Baker, the triple champ. I'm going to ask him the questions that you've been firing to us on social media. Um, Joe, nice to have you. Yep, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon, sir. Uh, first question, how did you cope with the heat this time around? Uh, an apt question uh, when we're sat out here baking Roasting. again, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, I did a 24-hour event last year, um, and it was I think it was the hottest weekend um, of 2022. So there I did learn about trying to do the cooling techniques. So pre-race at Reading, um, I was laid on a cooling mat. Yeah, it's actually bought for pets. Um, so it's, yeah, so I had one of those laid out in my tent in the shade um, and then had my ice uh, blocks from my, my cool box. I sort of sacrificed that, just put those on my chest. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as, before I went to the start line, doused myself all in water, soaked my hat, keep the skin um, damp because that just helps the evaporation and the heat loss um, and it also brought some frozen bottles of water so I actually cut those open put the block of ice in a, in a buff on my neck yeah, right. um, and just had that cooling and then every lap I would put more ice on there douse myself at, at both my Rinse base repeat. and then the um, and just really it was best you can is, is just keep yourself wet in those uh, circumstances really nice Next question would be, how many laps do you think is possible? Is there any more in you? There's, there is more. I, I, I think Leeds, Leeds we'll, already. We'll start, we'll start with Leeds. Um, I think back to last year, there was, there was a 31 lap there. I mean, if we're talking within the, the 24 hours, because yeah. uh, I know we've talked before, I like to have done it all in the 24 hours. I know the rules mean. You you're can't, a, you're you, a purist. You, yeah, you, you, you could have gone out, and I could have gone out, I think I did 23, 25 last time, yeah. so I could have done another another lap. But within that full 24, 24. hours, you know, I, I probably don't like to admit it, but the, the last few laps I was almost thinking, I don't really want to go out for a 31st lap, so I need to... <laughs> and, stop. And, and, yeah, no, I probably <laughs> let myself drop four or five minutes on those last few laps uh, well, to make off. sure it was not in, in question. Um, so I do think this probably is a, a 31 within the 24 hours. Right. Um, and Reading, what do you think? You got 28 down there. Tw 28. I think on a cooler day, yeah. uh, I, I think there's there is probably a 30 there. Um, I would sort of think the where I had where the heat sort of hit me in the middle of the afternoon and I dropped maybe two or three minutes mm. on those laps. I had I been able to maintain that quicker pace for another? four or five laps there and then not had the dehydration on the last few. There's, there's definitely a 29 there, out. but there's probably a, there's a, probably hot, a 30. It was a, hot, it was a hot one. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. Yeah. If you pulled uh, together three of your best running friends, how many laps could you do as a three? So I know you're a bit of a quicker man uh, if you're doing marathons. So how many laps could you do with your best, your best three mates? Well, the, my running club actually holds the record for the small team here. Nice. So, uh, it which was, it was a team of five, and I think it was 48 laps that they did. So, you know, if, if I could substitute myself in with one of those, uh, as, as one of those guys, then we... Name who you'd we, substitute out, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're actually, the, the, the club's got, a, you know, a really quick set of male runners there. Um, and I, I, I don't even know if I could name the five exactly that, that we had in that, because you could you could pick maybe 10 guys that are... Very diplomatic that, answer, yeah. thank you. What does your training look like the week of? Uh, and when should you start training for, for next year? Um, training the week of uh, is, is fairly light. You, you'll have done all the main training, which I'll come on and answer the second part in, this, um, in a minute, but um, I would have tended to run Monday, Wednesday, mm. maybe Thursday, Friday. Or just Friday, if you're coming to set up and stuff, you're going to be active as well. I think I may, mainly clocked up close to 10,000 steps by the time you sort it out in the campsite. I do try to sort of keep it as as weight off your feet as, as much. A, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I, was on, I was on a session. Nice. <laughs> yeah. No, I try to keep uh, weight off your feet and um, just keep that whole sort of relaxed in the week. It's, um, I think it's quite a common thing that on the, the last few nights, people tend to struggle to sleep. Mm. Um, I don't know whether it's that pent up apprehensive of the race so trying to bank your sleep early in the week you know 
Sunday the, the week before, Monday, just trying to, you know, can you stretch it out eight hours, nine hours um, and get the extra sleep. So when you're um, sort of Thursday, Friday here and you potentially, like if you're camping here, then it's, if you're in a tent, you obviously have it, it's light, isn't it? Uh, quite early on, so you, you maybe have a few less uh, hours. So, so week, of the, week of the race, plenty of sleep. It's only a couple of easy runs, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and then in terms of training... Yeah, uh, next, next year, how, how far out do you start? I know you're a busy man with other, other events, but what, when do you start thinking about Endure specifically? Um, for me, it depends on what other races are happening. So, because Endure sort of sits in the middle of the year, I'd like to have done a marathon and a 100k race um, sort of earlier on in the year. So, when, at the turn of at the turn of the year, I'll be doing marathon training, mm -hmm. um, go through to a spring marathon, and then onto a 100k. Uh, although in 2022, it was the other way around, did the 100k first, then onto the marathon. Yeah. Um, so that's built up the aerobic base. So it's not really endure specific training. It, it's thing. for those. Um, yeah, and a lot of people will find that when they're training in the week, they're running quicker than they actually need to do here. Mm. And that's one of the things that going back to the, the pacing question is, you've got 24 hours, just just go slowly relax, around here. Relax. Yeah, you don't have to do it all in that <laughs> that first four or five hours. Yeah, nice. So. How do you work out when you're going to rest? Is that all to feel as well? Uh, well, because I, I don't rest, then it's... Uh, <laughs> That's a non-question, basically, then. I don't it, rest. It's just if you need to go to the toilet or if you want to change your socks, there's no plan yeah. behind that. Yeah, and um, whilst I changed my socks at Reading, was sort of a... 50 mile, 100 mile. Mm. It was more to the fact that I'd actually got gravel in my shoe in, in the ninth lap. So I was like, well, at this point, I'm going to have to take my shoe off because I don't want any sort of rubbing with the stones. So as soon as my shoes are coming off, I think, right, fresh socks on. Um, and uh, I know we've had um, a laugh when I've chatted with uh, with Mark up in the commentary about, because at, at Henley, I actually changed my socks eight times. I um, but I quickly realised that, you know, I'm losing five minutes. So those eight times, that's... 40 minutes, maybe a bit longer on some of those. I probably lost a lap at Henley. How many pairs of socks do you True. have? Enough. <laughs> <laughs> More than eight? Yeah. Nice. What nutrition do you use whilst running? So, I've moved mainly to sports nutrition stuff. Uh, I use the OT products because they've got a super carb drink that I can mix up 40 grams of carbs in the drink. And then I think to maintain a high level of carbohydrate, you need it in your drink. Mm. Um, so I'd mix that up for red in at 330 mils liquid and 40 grams of carbs. Uh, and then I was on, on gels as well. And a few people said, how can you do gels for 24 hours? But and only you, one bathroom break, it's outrageous. <laughs> yeah. um, the, I did have one flak jack, but because of the heat and the more solid the food, they just struggle to eat and then process it. As yeah. soon as I put it in my mouth, that was dry. Um, so liquid and gel based food was just to keep me going. Um, sort of prior to, I'd say, the last 12 months, I would have had sort of breads, sort of the carbohydrates you potentially think out, outside of the, the sports nutrition stuff, um, you know, sweets, mm. um, jelly sweets, uh, well, even jelly and, and that type of thing. So when I did, when I did Leeds last year, I still probably had a few laps of uh, pizza slices and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so coming past the uh, sport crew, pizza slice, and then eat that on, on the way down. Um, no liquid yeah. Joey's on the go. Yeah. Nice, mate. Any tips on taking breaks and pacing? Did you step off the course at all at Reading? At uh, Reading, I, I came off um, twice for sock changes, and a third was at a toilet stop. <laughs> but I think I was off the course for a total of about 13 minutes, I'd say, were not active time. 13 um, minutes in 24 hours. I've, I've got pretty good at changing my, my uh, shoes and socks, so about five minutes for a shoe and yeah. uh, sock change, so you can work out the time on the, the, know, the, the other bit. And on your pacing, I looked at your splits, you're looking at doing like 40, uh, 50 minutes to 59 minutes every lap, pretty much. Yeah, so pacing, I know that over time, my body will deteriorate and I'll, I'll naturally slow down. So what I try to do is think of it as um, like if say we've got 100% and by the end of it I want to hit zero mm. then I'm just keeping it's more to feel it's like this this is an easy pace um, and that was more difficult in the heat going back to the last question because I maybe start off a little bit quick I think I was doing 42s 43s for that first 
first bit and my heart rate was was higher than I liked mm. um, but I only tend to drop 30 seconds a minute per lap I don't really have the stark or you've hit a wall and there's another five ten minutes the only time that happens is the the laps where I've, I've stepped off to change my, my shoes where there's steady the, from the, the start five then, minutes basically. yeah steady yeah from, nice did you get any blisters at E24? I'm really, I'm really fortunate. I, I really don't get blisters on hardly any of the, the events that I do. Um, so leather toes. Uh, well, I think because they're mainly flat courses, that that tends to be all right. The the only time I've had it was on a, a on an ultra trail Snowdonia, which was just the up and the down. My heels weren't used to it, so I got mm. blisters around my heels. Um, but on the endure stuff, now I've I've been been fortunate. Maybe the odd little bit around the toe, yeah. um, but. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing that yeah stops me running. Uh, yeah, so last question for you, Joe. What tips would you give to a first-time wannabe ultra marathon runner? Firstly, great, great idea Welcome to come an ultra sport. runner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's. I think that the the, the easy running, the the, the volume, um, building it up over time. I'd probably suggest if you're picking your first ultra. I would go for more of a either a spring or autumn to try and avoid having weather conditions as one of those things you've got to deal with. Mm. Um, but an event like this is great that you can actually, because of the laps, you, there isn't. You could dip in and out. Mm. I mean, yeah, like today, I'm, I've, I've done 20 miles. I'll go back out and they'll do another <laughs> little bit. But you can just like, and and all the support you don't. Uh, nutrition wise and things you, you've got that base yeah. whereas obviously some of the stuff where you've got to carry all your kit and be self su self sufficient then it's you know what what level of um, what level do you want to go to so yeah. um, certainly advantages of a, of a looped course yeah you know um, where the toilets are you know where your food yeah. stationed you know to break it down a bit easier yeah so yeah picking something like this is a, is a great is a, a great entry point really nice cool appreciate it yeah. Cheers, Joe. No. Thank you. Enjoyed it.